Hey everybody, today I wanted to do a quick screencast on the Angular CLI. This is a tool that I've been using on a couple of projects and I wanted to make a video on just some of the things that I've learned about it. Um, hopefully you can get something out of it and um, kind of get up and running. So first things first is you're going to want to have Node.js installed. I'm running 6.9.4 on my machine currently, so if you want to follow along, that's going to be the version that you're going to want to download as well. Um, it's working totally fine on my machine, so it'll be a, a pretty safe bet. Um, next, we're going to want to have the CLI itself. Um, once you have Node installed, you'll be able to run the command that you see on screen. Um, I already have it installed, but just so you can kind of see what it's going to look like, you're going to type npm space install dash g which stands for global and then angular hyphen cli and once you've typed that in hit enter it's going to do its thing and that should um, install on your machine you should be able to verify that by typing ng space hyphen v and once it does that you should see pretty much the same thing that i'm seeing maybe the os might be different but you should see Angular CLI with its version and then Node with 6.9.4 or whatever the current version is. Um, but as you just saw, once you install the CLI, you'll have access to that command ng. Um, this is what everything is prefixed uh, with in the CLI. So it's be, it'll be something that you see quite a bit. Um, so let's do the most basic command first. We are gonna wanna start a new project. Um, Currently, I'm in my projects directory, and we're going to type ng space new. That's what you're going to do, and then hyphen my project. Now, my project can be anything you want. That's just what I'm going to call the project for this demo. Um, and then, additionally, you can add, um, pass a couple flags in there. Um, I like working with SAS personally, and you can set the default of the project to use SAS if you type hyphen hyphen style equals SCSS. Because normally it'll just be regular old CSS. And since I like using SAS, I like to set the default to that so I don't have to go back in and change um, all the files and kind of how it's set up. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and we should see it start create some files here for us, which it is. Um, and then down at the bottom, it's saying that it's installing packages for tooling via NPM. So as most of you know, that takes a little bit of time. Um, but while that's doing its thing, I will show you kind of the basic file structure here. So let's open that up with Sublime. Get rid of this old one. And this new one here. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. I know the file structure is a little bit small over there, but um, what you'll see is um, a couple folders, and quite a bit of quite a bit of files here. It looks a little bit intimidating at first. Um, to be honest, I haven't dealt with all of these files. Maybe just a couple. Um, you're going to want to familiarize yourself with this Angular CLI.json. Um, that's going to have kind of the the meat of all this. Um, but in this video, we're not going to be going over um, much of this. We're just going to be going over kind of um, just like the styles and scripts for when we install Bootstrap later on. Um, but you'll see that it has a big old um, JSON object that has all the settings for the CLI. Um, you'll see that we have the styles here. So it has the entry point for all the styles and then any additional scripts that you want to add right here. Um, you'll also see down here that the style extension is SCSS, which we passed in earlier in that initial command. Um, and then up here at the top, you'll see um, the version and the name of your project. So, I mean, there's a lot more in here, but for the sake of time, we're just gonna go with um, the basics. Uh, next over here on the left, you'll see the source directory. Um, this is gonna have all of your project files. Um, you'll see that we have our index.html, our style.scss, um, assets and app. Um, when you first launch the um, a new project, it's going to create an app component. 
Um, this app component is kind of the main component of the app, hence app component. Um, and every time that you create an additional component, it will kind of follow the same structure. Every time you do it, um, it'll, it'll give you an HTML file, an SCSS file, a couple TypeScript files. It won't give you this app.module.ts though. That's something that only the, the initial one will have. So looks like, yep, all the, pack, all the packages have been installed. So once that has happened, you're gonna wanna go into the directory that you created. So we called it my project, so we'll CD into my project. And then once you're in there, um, to get it up and running, it's a simple command, ng space serve. Hit enter. And it's starting up, okay, yeah. So it's doing a lot of things right now. Um, but once that those percentages as they whiz by reach um, 100%, um, we will be able to take a look at a working app. So now that that's working, let me bring over um, localhost 4200 where it's running. Let's see if we can get a better better view of that. So if we were to scroll, oh man, all the way back up to the top of this thing, all the way back to oh, past it, says ng live development server is running on localhost 4200. So once that has finished its thing, you can navigate over to 4200 and you should see a message called app works, which is exactly what it does. Uh, says it means that the app is working. Um, so now this is kind of watching. You can see that the cursor is down here. Just it's not going to let us type in anything there. Um, that's because Webpack is watching for changes. And so that's what another nice thing about the CLI is you don't have to worry about any of that initial Webpack setup. It just kind of takes care of it for you. Um, so next up, I'm just going to show you how to create a component and I'm going to let Webpack keeps doing it, doing its thing. Um, and so I'm gonna open up a new tab here in my terminal. Um, let's see into my desktop. Let's go into projects. And then we call this my project. So now that we're back into our initial project, um, we can create a new component. Um, now you can create pretty much everything from the CLI minus routes. So you can create services, components, directives, pipes, that whole thing. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea of how it works, because they pretty much all work the same, I'm just gonna show you how to do a component really quick. Um, so you're gonna, it's gonna start out with ng, kind of like all the other commands. Um, g, which stands for generate. I mean, you can type out generate, but I mean, who wants to? Um, ngg space component, you're telling it that you want to create a component, not a service or a directive, and then you're going to give it the name of the component. My first component. Let's make that a little bit longer so it doesn't wrap. And then hit enter. So it'll give us a success message right there saying it created all the things. And then now if you look over here to our left, um, under the app, folder, you'll see my first component. Um, you'll see that it has our component.html, our component.scss, um, spec file, and our component itself. Um, in the app component, we saw earlier that it was it gave us an h1 with a title, and inside there, the title is app works. So that's what we were, we were seeing right here. But if we were to re refresh the the browser, you're not going to see anything different. Where's our other component? Well, we have to include this component into the main app component, which is what's being displayed. So app component or the my first component, if you go into the component um, file here, you'll see that the selector, the selector is app my first component. So it kind of like appends all the names in there for you. Um, and before we actually put this into the app, I wanna show you something real quick. Um, if we go over to this app.module.ts, um, where it has kind of all of our imports, 
you'll see right here that it's imported the app component, but it's also imported my first component component, which I think is one of the coolest things about the CLI is that as soon as you create a component, um, it just imports it right here and declares it as well. So you never have to worry about, you know, creating a component and getting it all in there. And then you're banging your head against the wall as to why it's not showing up. Because usually it's because you haven't imported it. Um, so this takes care of that for you. You just generate it and it puts those in the files for you. So let's go over to the app.component.html. So all we have to do to get that second component in there is just create a new tag with um, app my first component in there. So let's hit save. See if this is working over here. Looks like it was able to bundle and everything's now valid again. And then my first component works. So we get a nice little confirmation message saying that everything is working just the way we want it to. Um, so now that we, I mean, you can just kind of follow suit with the rest of the components and services that you create. You'll kind of see how they get output. Um, and it, it's honestly not too much different. So by seeing this first one, you should be pretty good to kind of know how the rest work. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you um, is how to get Bootstrap in here. Um, so you do that by going to the command line again. So we're gonna go over to our other tab where we were generating the component. Let's clear that out. Um, and then it's actually a, just as simple as um, using the uh, node package manager. So all you have to do is paste in this right here, npm install bootstrap at next, hit enter, and that's gonna go off and, and do its thing. It's gonna put it over here into our node modules file, folder, excuse me. Um, and once you, once this has completed, we can go over to our Angular um, CLI.json file. And this is where those two uh, arrays are gonna come, come in. Um, it's worth noting that these things need to, once you start importing um, third-party styles or scripts, they need to be in the correct order that they are going to get compiled in. If you try and do something with jQuery um, before you have jQuery in there, it's gonna yell at you. So just make sure everything is the, in the right order. And I'll show you an example of that right now. Um, so if we have bootstrap in here, we're gonna need to have these three files in there as well. Let's kind of clean that up a little bit. So first we wanna have jQuery and then we want to have Tether, and then we want to have Bootstrap. So make sure that that's in the right order. Um, and then we're also going to want to have the styles in there as well. So I will bring that over next to make sure it's above styles.scss. Um, and then we're just going to be going into our node modules folder, the Bootstrap, and grabbing our CSS file as well. So if we save that, and if we were to go back over here, you know, nothing's gonna be different. Um, it's worth noting that every time that you add something in here, you have to reserve the app. So let's go back over to our terminal. Go back over here, hit Control C if you're on a Mac to get out of this. And then you wanna do ng serve again. So that will just tell the CLIs, hey, like I need to redo everything. So go look at all my my config file again and get all of those things again. So it'll look to see that we have, that we're telling it that we want jQuery and Bootstrap and all that and put that in there for us. So once that is done doing its thing, we should see the um, browser tab reload. And now you can see that the font size is a little bit bigger and we've got the, you know, um, H, or the H1s are a little bit bigger and the, the font is a little bit different, so. That, that tells us that that's working. Um, so now that we have that installed, there is one a couple of quirks with uh, the CSS that I wanted to make mention of. Um, one's actually kind of cool and the other one's um, a little bit funky. So um, I'm actually gonna ask you guys a question about it. So hopefully I can get an answer because that's been something I've been racking my brain against. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. But for now, the cool thing about um, the CSS and how it's output is, let me show you an example here real quick. So if we go over to my first component, inside here we have a p tag, right? 
And then in the app component, we have an h1 tag. Let's just change this p tag to an h1 tag. And then we go into um, the app component. And let's say that the h1 tag is color blue. We'll let it recompile. And you'll see that the app h1 is blue, but not the my first component h1. That is because, actually a pretty cool reason. Let me see if I can blow this up right here. So Angular puts in these um, attributes on all of its components children. So in this case, the H1 is a child of the app component. And so you'll see over here that the color blue has been attached to the H1, but only the H1 that has that specific attribute on it. So the CSS is actually scoped to the component. So you don't actually have to worry about stepping on your other component CSS toes, um, which I find extremely helpful because you know when you're templating on something else that doesn't do this, then you have to make sure that you're either wrapping all of your tags or assigning specific tags or you know whatever. You don't have to do that here. You just have to say I want the H1s in this component to be this color, and then only those H1s in that particular component will be that color. So. I think that's actually a pretty nice feature uh, worth mentioning. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention that's kind of a quirk, um, let's see. So what you can do is we have this assets folder. Let's go back up. So we have this assets folder. Let's just make another file here. Let's save this, let's call it it's going to be a SAS file, so let's make it variables.scss. So let's make another partial. And then in here, let's make a variable called uh, orange. And then it'll be orange. Save that. We go down into our styles.scss and add import. So let's import that file. We're going to go into assets, variables. So if we go into, so now, I mean, technically this file that sh that gets output should have these assets variables in them. If we go into our app component and say that the H1 color is orange, let's see what happens saying that orange doesn't exist. Um, so what we have to do, import, oh yeah, because we had to go up a directory. So now that looks good. Let's go back to this file and now it's saying that it's orange. So, I mean, you can kind of see the problem here that you're gonna have to do that on pretty much anywhere that you have a variable, you're gonna need to do all of your imports here at the top. I mean, that to me seems like a little bit of a hassle and it's, I don't know, I kind of see it as just, just a pain point. Um, having to import all of my variables or all of my mexins or like my grid or whatever up at the top of every single component that's going to be using that. I don't know. I, give me your opinion on it. Maybe there's something that I'm missing, um, some sort of hidden benefit, I guess. Um, but anyway, let me know what you guys think. But I think I'm going to end the video there. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Um, if you like it, then let me know. Um, Give me a reason to do a couple more of these and if there's something else that you would want me to cover if you have any questions about what i already covered um, go ahead and leave a comment or message me directly on twitter it's at the underscore alex young um, but anyway thanks for watching and until next time